Hey there, I'm going to go over doing some Adobe Illustrator work that will be useful in doing the um, education and career planning guide cover activity. And so um, this is not really what one would look like at the end, but I've just played around a little bit here. Um, and we're going to create what would be a cover for the school uh, career planning guide. So you're going to create a new document and that document is going to be a print document. So you'll choose print and letter size is normal page paper. So it will be a letter size document like this. And then you're going to have to decide how you want to set up your page. And I'm going to tell you from, from past experience when we've done this project, it really seems to come down to probably more than anything, the fonts. They seem to really like certain fonts. So uh, be creative in deciding what fonts you might want to use when you do this activity. Some other things that, that they seem to like is the choice of the clip art that you use. And because this is a thing that has to get printed and it costs money, trying to use fewer colors seems to kind of be the best thing. So really, like black, white, gray, and red, that's about it. And sometimes they've even sent it back and said, we just need black and red and then, you know, white in the empty space. So I would suggest that you not use any more colors than black, white, gray, and red in your design. But let's say that I uh, want to use this clip art. I'm going to go ahead and save this clip art picture and, um, you know, right click save image and I'm going to call it Indian C3 for clip art 3. And then in Illustrator, I'm going to place that image. So file place. I'm going to go find my um, picture here. And then I've got it in here. Now this is not a vector image. This is what we would call a bitmap or a clip art image. And so it's not going to be, if we zoomed up, like with vectors, how they're mathematically derived and they're fully scalable, clip arts are not when they're bitmaps. But we can convert them to paths. So you can tell it's not paths because when I pick it up and move it, it's all one thing. However, when you insert an image, you can click on this live trace button or you can click the drop down. And what it does, I'm just going to click the button, what it does is it immediately traces it. Now notice everything is very sharp. It's creating vectors from this. Now the default here is to go to, and I'm going to click this little options button, is to go to black and white. So it immediately goes to black and white. Now you can tell it to trace and create fills. You can have it create strokes. Different things are going to set it up different ways. Now let me just show you what this looks like. I'm going to do it just fills first. So when I click trace, and then I expand, and that's the second step. All of these are fills. And so you can see here, if I take my white arrow tool, I can click, and I'm going to have to, really can't. Basically, all of this is just fills. So it's not like that's a stroke and that's a line. This is all fills. So I could change the color of all the fills, like this, because they're all connected, and then I could come in and change these. But they're all fills, so they're not strokes. There's no strokes anywhere. And if you have it set to that, which, by the way, is the default, you know, that's what's going to happen. Okay? Now, I'm going to do this again. Let me click it all. All right. I'm going to do this again, and this time I'm going to change the settings so you can see the difference. So, here it is again. Again, I'm going to live trace. This time, I'm going to set it to give me strokes and fills. And let's see what happens here. When I hit trace, I lost some of the definition of this. That just happens. And then I hit expand. And now it's a little bit different. Now let's just see what we've got. Um, if I click on it now, notice, and when you use your white arrow, that's kind of like you're kind of almost going into a group and you can kind of ungroup. So like now this is all one thing. And so it's got an outline around it and then it's filled in. So the difference is before we didn't have that going on. And then same thing here. These are actual shapes that are filled in. And then here's this filled in. I personally think it's nice to have um, have it set up this way, but that's just me. Now you can get into the group if you have your black arrow and you double click you can get into the group and then pick on the, the various pieces and that makes it a little bit easier especially if you're going to recolor parts of it but there may be a lot of parts to recover so you got to really be careful and decide which way you want to go about it. Okay now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to get rid of it one more time and I'm going to place it again and this time I'm going to allow it to have some color so I'm going to bring this one in and uh, again live trace, but this time instead of 
the default black and white, I'm going to choose color. And you can click on color, and then now it's converting it to colors. Now, because there's six colors, and there's really not fully six colors in this, some of the shadowy, blurry areas are turning into shades of gray. I don't want that, so I'm going to lower the color count. And see, notice as I bring the colors down more and more, so now I have three colors, which is black, white, and red. I'm getting much sharper angles because I'm not getting that fuzziness. And whenever I turn it up, um, it, it looks like it included the skin color here on this one. If I go up one more, it's giving me some grays. If I go up one more, it's giving me some even lighter grays. So that's kind of important, too, if you're going to um, go to that level where you want colors. Now, once I've done that, notice here if I go to the options, and again, I could have gone through and, and set some of these options again. You can output these colors to swatches, which will then put that these three colors, black, white, and this shade of red, it will put it over here in my swatches so that when you use that red the rest of the time, you're using the same red. That's kind of important. You can also tell it to ignore white. That's also an option, so in the result that it doesn't actually put the white in there. Um, I don't have preview clicked. Let me click preview here. Okay. All right. So if I've got two colors, I'm going to get black and white. If I get three colors, I'm going to get red. Um, looks like on this specific preset, it's not going to let me choose the um, strokes option. So you just kind of have to play around with it until you get what you want. Anyway, you can then click on trace and then expand. If you don't hit expand, it won't go to paths. So when you hit expand, that expands it out to paths, or in this case, it's mostly strokes, um, but there are some, you know, fills in here too. And then, um, then because it's a um, set to paths, you can use a thing called live paint. And I don't remember exactly where that one is in here, um, but somewhere should be a live paint brush. Totally not finding it. Live paint bucket. And you can use your live paint bucket to actually hover over these areas and fill them in with color. And you can choose, um, you know, what colors that you want to use too. And you would probably go to your swatches and then if you've got the colors from your image in there, you can click one and then use it to live paint. So if I clicked on the black, then it live painted all the black. And notice it was doing the stroke or you can choose to do the fill depending on where you're clicked at, okay? So anyway, that's an option too. Just know that that is there. Okay, so I'm done with that for now. You can bring in clip art and use that trace element in order to create those, or you can download what are called vectors. Now, these are already created in Illustrator or some program like Illustrator, um, and then you can download those. So I've already downloaded this. It's down here. You can't see down that far, um, but I'm going to click on it, and it's going to open up. And then here's Indian Headdress, and then I have two. I have a PostScript file and an SVG. These are both vectors, so it really doesn't matter which one you want to use. I'm going to go with the PostScript, the EPS. And if you double-click to open it, I'm pretty sure it will open in Adobe Illustrator. But if you have any troubles from in here, just drag it to your folder and then go to Adobe Illustrator and open it. So I'm going to double-click it, and here it is. It's a converted EPS. Again, I'm going to probably need to ungroup it and then click off of it. And then I've got my items. So if I wanted... A TP here I could if I wanted this headdress I could I could take the white arrow if I wanted to get into certain parts to make them colors um, and then the black arrow then to pull them across to the other document or whatever so that's an option too and if you deal with vectors that's nice because they're already like in the right format and they're already paths and you can already do lots of things to those so let's just pretend that I'm going to use this one um, I'm going to just copy this and come here to mine paste. So I've got this one on here. Um, let's say that I wanted to have the words go across uh, the top here. So I would use my pen tool and start here, you know, on one side and then come to the other side. It probably would be helpful to put the grid up, but I haven't done that. And then um, start drawing it. Now, if you hold down shift, it'll do, uh, it'll sometimes make it a little easier to draw. But here, this one, I can't get it up high enough if I do that. So, all right. So then once you have your path, um, you're going to put the text on the path. And so in this case, I don't want to have any fill on my path. 
but I do want to put text on a path. So when you click on your type tool over here, you're going to click it and hold and choose type on a path and then just click on the path. And then you should be on there and you should be able to type. So if I was going to put Jackson. By the way, it is best to type to click on the end of the path because right now I've got this kind of in all kinds of weird position. So I have to switch to my white arrow tool and then grab this little thing at the beginning of the path to scoot it down. It's kind of easier to do it that way and then you can hit center and it'll center it on the path. That's kind of the best way to go at that. Um, but anyway, back to my type tool. Triple click will select everything so you don't have to drag your mouse over it and then of course you can go in and choose whatever font that you want. And um, you can up your font this way or you can control T and drag your font to make it bigger or whatever. Totally your option. I never know what they're going to pick. I don't get to choose which ones are, are going to be selected you know, for the the winner each year. But anyway, you can add a border if you'd like to. Sometimes people will put borders around the edge. I will say if you're going to add a border, I'm going to like deliberately make this not really the right size. I'm going to give it a stroke of a little bit and no fill because I don't want to have fill. And um, if you wanted the border to fit like the right way on the page, like to be exactly in the middle of the page, then what you're going to do, oops, I grabbed a hold of my words too. Um, what you're going to do is while you're clicked on the shape with the move tool, you're going to come up to the top and you're going to click this button, which initially will be align to selection. You're going to say align to artboard. That's the page. And then right here is the center. So when you click horizontal center, it'll center your box. And when you click vertical center, it'll center it top to bottom. So you can use this to align things. Same thing here. If I wanted to align this picture, I could do the same thing if I wanted it right in the middle. It looks like I already had it right in the middle. And then this one probably is right in the middle too. With text, you really don't have some of the same options up here. You have to go a little further over to get to it. Um, but there you go. There it is. Okay. So do use those. Don't just eyeball it. Now, when you get ready to do it, you're going to have to add some additional things. Um, there's specific words that have to be on there. They also like for us to use the school logo, the J Spear. And so I have a folder out there in the multimedia folder. So that should be pretty helpful for you here. But I'm going to go to File Place. I'm going to go out here to our folder, Z Drive, Skinner Classes, Multimedia. And you'll find a folder in here specifically for this project. So J Spear right here, School Education and Career Planning Guide. Double click on there, and then there's the actual spear. By the way, there are also other images in here as well that might be useful in case you don't want to have to go save a whole bunch of different things. There's some in here, and you're more than welcome to use them. Um, although, if it's one that just won recently, they probably won't pick it again. So here's the JSpear PNG file. I am going to place that. And again, right now, this is not a vector. Um, this is a bitmap. This is a PNG, and PNGs are, are not vector files. So I could live trace it if I wanted to. Um, you can kind of see the difference here before and after. It does put this white background on. I'll show you how to get rid of that. But this did clean it up. It actually does look a lot better on here. Again, you can choose your colors. I could go fewer colors. It's going to make it look a little bit different depending on how many colors I go with. Um, and again, that's going to be kind of up to you as to how you want to go about that. Um, so anyway, I've got it at three colors, let's say. Um, coming in here... Um, Again, if you wanted to output your colors to swatches, so you're using the same ones you can. I'm going to hit Trace, and then finally Expand. Now, to get rid of the white background, just click off of it, take your white arrow tool, click on the background, and press Delete. Uh, just be sure you click off of it first so that you deselect everything, basically. And then when you when you resize, be sure you hold Shift and pull from the corner so you don't you know, mess it up or whatever. And then you would add whatever words you're going to add. Um, save it. And then I will have you submit them to me as PDF files into a folder when you're done. So there you go. There's just kind of a quick version of how to accomplish this career planning guide. And hopefully that is helpful.